Would you pay more for a flight if it meant less headaches when it comes to checked or carry-on bags? Well, Consumer Reports asked travelers just that. A Consumer Reports survey found that 40% of people who flew in the past year chose to pay a higher fare just to avoid baggage fees. And we're not just talking about the checked bags. In Consumer Reports survey, 30% of the Americans who had flown in the past year paid to carry on a bag. Consumer Reports says careful planning when you book your ticket may save you money, not to mention a headache, later at the airport. It's always smart when booking a flight to check to see if your airline offers a discount for prepaying baggage fees online. Well, it is well, costing, it is costing more, more to, to check, your, check bags. your bags. Sorry about that. We had a little technical difficulty there. American Airlines just raised its check bag prices to $35 online, $40 if you purchase it at the airport. So, Ginny, how do you see these extra costs like impacting people's travel plans? Well, I'm really seeing that, you know, what people need to consider is it is very well worth purchasing a full fare ticket to get that included. Um, you know, by the time when people are looking at low cost airlines and then they pay for a seat and then they pay for a bag and then they pay for even a check in a carry on bag, they've paid just as much, if not more sometimes than the, if they were to get a full fare that has a lot of benefits with it. Yeah, and sometimes those full fares mean that those airlines have a whole lot more flights that are going to go in and out. So if something's delayed or something like that, you have more options to get where you're supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. All right. So this person is asking, is it worth it to get travel insurance? So when is it worth it to get travel insurance? And we're not talking about the insurance like just for the flight when you book your flight. We're talking about like third party insurance. Yeah. So when to get it is you know, I think anytime you're going out of the country, what people don't realize is 99% of the time your U.S. health insurance, including Medicare uh, and Medicaid, does not cover you out of the country. So you want to cover it because that's the part that people think don't think about. You can most of the time purchase it up until about a week before you go. But what you have to consider is that depending on how long since you purchased your trip, if it's past final payment, it may or may not cover a couple things like supplier default, if for some reason that company went out of business, or pre-existing conditions. That's the one that catches people most of the time is the pre-existing conditions. All right, so the travel insurance is basically medical travel insurance, but does it cover other things too? Like if you have lost luggage and you need to? It does. Okay. Yes. It does, it covers lost luggage, it covers flight delays, you know, after a certain amount of time. It covers, uh, even if other people not traveling with you and you need to stay home or you need to come back early. So there's a lot of things that the policies do cover. Okay, this person says, if I'm taking a cruise to Cozumel, do I need a passport for that cruise? There's a lot of questions involved in that one. So for the, the general answer is yes, it's highly suggested. If you were doing what's called round trip out of the same port in the United States, it is not necessarily required, but you would have difficulty getting back if you needed to come back once you're on that ship without being on that ship. Yeah, so like if you got hurt or something like that, that you needed to be airlifted or something. All right, yeah. so this person says, I'm hoping to go to Ireland this summer, but I have mobility issues. Where can I get information about travel for people with limitations? So the best place is to, again, consult a travel advisor. Uh, we work with all kinds of companies that even your, you know, how you're going, how we can get you there, every single piece of the, par of the pie that is needed for someone with mobility issues. Mm -hmm. This person's asking, how safe is it to travel to Rio, Rio de Janeiro and what month would be the best one to go? Oh, anytime <laughs> I would say going to Rio. And yes, again, use caution. Um, you know, you don't want to just wander around these places on your own and make sure that someone is aware of where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, when you said that you should take like copies of your passport and stuff like that, where should you put them like when you're traveling? So I do use the safe, uh, but again, I've got a copy with me. I use the safe and a little tip that a lot of people know these days is I always put one of my shoes in there so that I don't forget to take it out before I leave. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, we thank you for your time and your expertise, right? Um, and if you missed any of this, maybe you wanna talk about it with your friends and family because you're gonna be going on a trip to one of the places that we talked about, you can find it in the two wants to know section of our website.